Welcome back to Basic Bananas Radio, where we share tried and tested ways to grow your brand and get more customers. Everything from the latest in marketing and branding, right through to growing your team and creating an irresistible culture. Hey, Janine, thank you so much for joining me on Basic Bananas Radio today. Hi, Francisca. Great to see you. Thanks yeah, for having like me. That. I'm so excited. No, I'm so excited about this conversation too. And th today we have a slightly different topic to what we normally talk about here. And that is about really how to excel as parents and business owners. I know many of our listeners are also juggling their families with their businesses. And, and you know, we, we have a whole bunch of different balls in the air. And you're really good at empowering parents to excel as CEOs of their families and their lives and their businesses. So I thought this would be really cool to have this conversation. So maybe let's start with what what does it mean to excel as a CEO of our families? And even how we can go about it. Yeah, it's uh, that's a really good question. It's very much about the empowerment for you as an individual, for you in a family environment, whatever that might look like for you. Every single one of us has a family environment that looks different, whether you are a parent from you have adopted children, whether you take care of your nephew, nieces, whether you have your own kids or whether you have um, an aunt you take care of or a best friend you spend a lot of time with. Everyone has a personal life and somewhat what they call maybe an adopted family or their own family to some extent. We always spend a lot of time in that environment, whether you're a business owner or not, whether you're a career-driven person or not. And to be empowered is really what's unlocking the success to um, a good life and for you to feel fulfilled and empowered and to be a strong person. And the struggle comes with finding an alignment between business or professional life and also excelling in your personal life and doing that well. Often we have an imbalance of maybe an 80-20. We often spend a lot more time in our professional lives. We learn skills and tools and read books and attend workshops and trying to make that better because that's where our income is coming from that's where a lot where a lot of our status like things that we see coming from maybe power maybe influence and we often forget that personal life is if not even more important because that is our why that is what what's driving us that's what drives us in life and takes us to what we're actually doing in the, in our professional career. And the challenge with that is if we are not happy or fulfilled or aligned within our personal life, our productivity gets, gets affected. And statistically, it, it affects our productivity by over 30%, which has an impact on our professional life, whether we work for someone or whether we have our own business. And if you do have your own business, that's impacting your revenue statistically by up to 20%, which is a lot. So the focus should always be on personal empowerment so you can then build a personal life the way you want it to look like. Whatever that means for you, whatever there is no perfect book or guideline on what a perfect life looks like, but it's about the personal development for yourself. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I definitely think that when we are feeling good and we are sort of working optimally, that's when we also get way more out of our work. And when we are actually working, we are so much more productive. I feel that that when I'm when I'm on, I can work less and get more output. Not that I generally work less, but I get more out of my time. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. how, what, what are some tips that you give business owners to be empowered what, what, what are some hacks it's, some... yeah it's uh, about not reinventing the wheel 
So we don't need to feel to feel like we're like a hamster in a treadmill and every work, all the work that we had to put into business to also put, put that into personal life. So we have to read a book on business and we have to read a book on personal life for personal development or empowerment or tools that we have to learn. It's really not about that. It's about utilizing what we have because we know we have these skills when the pandemic hit and I became a single mom, a lot of people asked me, how are you doing everything? How are you working, running a business, raising a child by yourself, figuring it out, you know, mental health, like all of these things. And then I realized it's because I'm utilizing the skills that I have learned throughout life in business. And, you know, when you think about I'm spending all of this time, like where am I supposed to get all of this this other time from to then also have a very healthy and stable and focused personal life? I don't have time to do more workshops or read another book or spend like I'm out of time and the overwhelm kicks in. And for me, it's always been let's utilize what we have. Let's not reinvent the wheel. Let's, let's utilize the tools that have been proven successful in the history of time and with other people and businesses and apply them to personal life. So then you can align both of them. Yeah, I feel like we, we, we can go maybe a bit more practical because someone might be listening mm. and, and saying, well, what what do you mean? I have I have nothing or I don't I don't know what you <laughs> what do you mean with with these tools so what what are some yeah. examples and, and to to get super practical for for our listeners yeah so for me the beginning was with um core values really thinking about what we what we stand for because when i had a, a child and i always had core values for my business and i would think about what core values do i stand for now <clears throat> just starting to think with, with, about that like my foundation for my family, what I want to teach my child, how I want to raise my child, what do I stand for, which also creates my boundary. So I kind of like built like a little box or a frame for my life. And then I would think about, okay, how do I need to structure my day to have that most effective? So I would bring in different tools like uh, the Eisenhower matrix. If um, no one knows what that is, is, is how about you can prioritize and delegate certain tasks and whether they should be done now, if someone else can do them, or if I if maybe there's no relevance for them and you can sort them out. Um, then there is ways of how to budget better in your personal life. There is there are tools about communication skills, how you run a, com a, a conversation better within uh, your family whether it's with your children with a partner with um, someone else you might have a conversation with so the flow of that and even coaching skills to speak with your kids it's not about the delegation of that or even when you talk to a partner but how can you coach or have a conversation with someone in your family to then help them bring the best outcome out of themselves rather than delegating or t telling them what to do or giving them advice. Like Francisca and I, were both part of the Entrepreneurs' Organization and it's about experience share. We call it the EO mindset. And I like to still apply that in a family environment. I don't want to give advice from a place where it's, it's not valid because I don't have experience with that. So I find my way either sharing or coaching them through their own experience to then helping them finding the best solution for themselves in their own um, way of thinking and mind and empowering them through um, their own um, experiences. So yeah, there, there are a lot of tools um, in, in that res retrospect in terms of, I have a chapter in my book, for example, called The Art of Allowing. And it's, in business, we think it as we're hiring someone or, you know, we're telling someone what to do in a personal life, especially when you are a parent, we can't be expected or expect for ourselves to do it all ourselves. There's no such thing. Raising children has always been and still is 
part of a community and whatever your community looks like, whether you hire an au pair and any um, get a neighbor to help you, a best friend, whether you have family around, whether you have a partner, whatever it is. But the art of allowing someone to help you and we live in a society where people are so busy and often don't they don't think about how they might be helping you or that you need help because we're just so shaped in the way where we now say, I don't need help, I'm fine, I can do it. We don't want to look weak. We don't want to look like our mental health might be challenged or we're incapable of parenting or doing it all, running a business, working you know, having a healthy family environment, but the art of that, allowing someone or even ask for well, what do we ask for? How do we ask? These are all tools now that we that we have to relearn to be helped and build a community so we, we can give and take and build both sides of work and family life. Yeah, I'm definitely not super good at, at asking either. And just around <laughs> the, the values, I, I love the, you know, having the personal values. We also here with my family and my kids, we also do our family values. So we have five family values. One of them is love, love and that. respect. And one is freedom, which means we allow each other space. And so what we do, which is a little practical thing here for our listeners. I know you you guys love when we, we give you super practical things to do. Is What we do is we have a monthly family meeting. And it's actually because my kids are too young. It's, it's just my partner and I, we sit down every month. We do a review, a monthly review of the last month we just do it we just did one here it's always at the start of the month to look at the months prior and we go through what's working what's not working similar like in business you know the the keep stop start what's working what's not working what can we continue doing and we look at the values real quick we say hey are we living these values which one are we ne neglecting can we do better on this front so something that has worked really well for us is these monthly family meetings and if I was a single mom I would still run these family meetings just with myself and my kid or or on my own so yeah I thought that might be a little practical thing to throw in what about what's your take on work-life balance because I have a little bit of a different take on it than most people so I'd, I'd love to yes. hear your thoughts yeah I absolutely agree I'd love to hear what you think about it um, I don't believe balance exists. Balance for me is like you try to balance it out and give it your all on both sides. You try to focus on the 50-50. 50-50 doesn't exist. I try to refrain from using the word but balance in that environment. For me, I like to call it alignment. And it's more of an alignment, whatever that looks like, whether it's like a 2080, but the communication is the key between the two. Like, how do you make that work? So that's both been commun communicated to both sides. So you can share with your family what's happening on your work, work side to share your schedule and say like, look, but today I have a full day here, but then tomorrow that could look like this. So we'll, we'll focus more on that. There is a plan. It's been organized. It's been scheduled. It's been planned. And it's been communicated. So there's an alignment. It's like in a relationship. You can't expect a 50-50. There is, um, you know, sometimes someone can give 80% because they have a good time and things work well on other ends. Sometimes someone only has to give 20%. And I, I've heard a lot of people communicate even that level saying, you know what, I woke up and I'm a 20 today, I can't give you more, which is also an expectation thing and a communication. And that communication side of things between even children is so crucial because they do understand. My son is three and a half and many say to me, well, he's, he's little. He does understand though. I can explain it to him on a certain level. And he goes, okay, mommy, I understand. It's okay. And I will talk about it or change the wording if I think he's not very clear on it but he does understand time he understands schedules I have like a little countdown calendar with emojis and symbols for him so you can see like a house or a toy so he knows we have like certain trips or whatever he understands that but the alignment and communication is key to for what some others might say like trying to create somewhat of a balance to work and family life 
Yeah, yeah. I think the communication bit is is super important. Um, yeah, for me, work life balance. I think the the term is total BS. I I don't believe in it. I never have. And the reason why yeah. is because I feel that it as you similar to you. I feel like you know sometimes in your business you have periods when you know you just need to put your foot down and you know this is my busy yeah. time i need to get in there i need to hustle i need to get up but you i mean you can have about ridiculous <laughs> hours of the day like four o'clock in the morning i might say <laughs> hey this is the time i need to get up at five or five thirty i need to get in there i need to hustle yeah. and and you know to generate this momentum and then there will be times where that's not the case and, and there'll be more time to spend with the family and so yes. I don't think there has to be always this even work-life balance. And I feel like because this, there's this thing about work-life balance, we often just beat ourselves up about it. We're like, oh my God, today I worked, you know, from five to 10 at night. And it's like, you know, I'm a horrible mom. But that's, again, that's because we think there has to be a balance. I, as you say, I don't think yeah. there has to be that exact 50-50 balance. There just has to be communication. And maybe if today I had yeah. to hustle to then enable my kids to go on holidays and have adventures, then it's just yeah. that time will then be the sacred holiday adventure time that is only able, we're only able to do that because I'm hustling now and I'm, you know, generating money to fund these adventures. So I think it's, yeah, I think it's overrated and I think it's BS. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to share on this podcast about supporting business owners, even in, you know, juggling and anything else that you wanted to share or any question that I didn't ask you? Yeah, uh, I think a big topic really is mental health and my work or what I'm doing about empowering parents really has stemmed from that place on mental health. I think it's um, it can be very down-talked. I think there's a lot more communication around mental health. Um, I always say like there's such a fine line between sanity and insanity. It can just switch like in a second where you have a good day and then for whatever reason it changes. Um, because you had and we just spoke about encountering uh, certain people and personalities and you feel let down and then you know you, re you re question everything like everything that you're doing what for people um, it turns your life upside down it affects you emotionally because you care it's like there's so many complex aspects of life and because we are humans and we are wide and extremely complex and uh, so is our brain and our mind and our heart and our soul. And it's it's an extreme roller coaster. <clears throat> that connection between others. So, for example, Simon Sinek said something really cool uh, the other day. And I do this with my friends. Most of my friends live overseas. So I will send either <clears throat> five to ten minute WhatsApp messages and just tell them what's going on in my life if the time difference doesn't allow uh, a conversation. Or Simon Sinek said, um, just text, can I have eight minutes? Just make this like an eight minute thing. And then people know what it is. You just want, want to talk. And it's not about giving advice or finding a solution. You just need an eight minutes with someone. And for me, it's always been that as well as uh, journaling. I've recently had been out of my routine and I have not journaled religiously like I normally would. I created my own whole journal process on what works for me and what helps me with my mental health, with my focus, with my positivity, with me being able to have the strength for everyone and driving forward. Whatever that means for someone, like going to the gym, going for walks, getting fresh air, air having time for yourself like allowing yourself whatever it is to do to have a clear mind and focus on your mental health so you that's like the foundation of empowerment for business life to focus to give everything to your business and the people that work within your business and be there for them and still have that for your family do that take that time out put it in your calendar schedule it in and just do whatever it takes to to make sure that mental health is is a real focus. Yeah, I love that, and and I really believe that you know there is no one size fits all. And as you say, 
just we just have to find mm. out what works for for us for me personally i see a huge difference of the last six months have been super i wouldn't say not tough but it's been quite a challenge with a, a newborn yeah. my, the Kaya is now six months and I've been working really quite a lot because it's been really busy at basic bananas, especially. And so working really hard and also of course not sleeping. And then also I've got my newborn with me all day, yeah. 24 hours a day. And so the one thing that has worked for me is to just in the mornings, just take a bit of time to go to the ocean here and either go for a surf if the surf is up or at least go for a walk with the dog and then jump in the ocean. And when I do that, and I do it generally religiously every day, unless Tom, my partner, has to leave super early. And when I don't do it, my day is very different. When I do do it, even yeah. after a, a night of not a lot of sleep, I feel completely differently. So that's something that works for me. Yeah. Journaling is another really amazing uh, tool. Meditation, of course, works for a lot of people. Walking in nature, yeah. whatever works. For some people, it's sleeping more. I mean, I'd love to also sleep more. The day will come. The day will come. Yeah. And even scheduling your day, like having a plan for the day. And it's not just for work where you have your task or your day scheduled out. And you know when you have your meetings, it's about your family as well, knowing when are things happening. When are, when are we going to the supermarket? Are we going to a play date today? Is there like a sport function? Are we going to read the story? Just like planning the day out exactly in the same way. So the expectations are being met. There's something to look forward to. There's a plan for the day, you know, especially for little kids that don't feel lost and then know what to expect. And then, like you said, like when we work a lot, we also have other days, like we work a lot so we can, we can take an odd week out or an odd day out when our kids are sick or might need more attention. And to explain that I've got to work today, but then tomorrow we're going to do this. And then in this many days or next week, we can go on this trip and we're going to have so much fun. And um, that just, just makes everything so much easier and clearer for everyone. Yeah, I, I definitely could do better on that front. I'm going to take that on the scheduling even for my, especially for my two and a half year old. Because often yeah. I would get up and then she's in daycare three days. I have her on Fridays and, you know, I would get up on Fridays and then I might be on the computer for an hour and she's, you know, playing with, with her own toys. And then we might go to the markets, but I don't actually tell her. I might just be like, okay, let's go to the markets now after I've just been an hour on the computer. And then mm -hmm. like we got the markets and okay, now let's go eat sushi. So I feel like it would actually really help her if I, if I said, you know, I'm working now for yeah. this amount of time and then we go to the market yeah. and then we go get lunch and then I might have to do half an hour in my office. She understands. She she, she says and she says, mm -hmm. oh, you have to go to the office, which is my home office here. So I feel like that's something I'm, I will definitely take away also from this chat and do better. I'm going to apply it actually tomorrow. Tomorrow is Friday here. So really appreciate that that tip here. I, I Any, love that. Yeah. You know, any closing awesome. comments, remarks, anything you would love to share? Yeah, just and just be you. Um, you know, in the end, these are all tools and things we can apply, like whether it's business tools or things you can apply in your personal life. But we, we shouldn't forget that we're all individuals and we all create our own roles, uh, our own whatever life might look like our own expectations based on our own core values and raising our children based on what we know is best for them in that moment. It's so unique and individual for everyone. Same with business. We can have guidelines, but in the end, it's just what your vision is, what you make of it, what based on your beliefs and what you want to do. So reminding yourself, like think about what you stand for and what you want to do, what your mission is, what your vision is, what your why is. And to focus on that. And one more thing I want to say is I think it's the time for for collaboration, for community, for get-togethers. So asking for help and supporting one another. And rather than thinking of competition or someone is taking my whatever or not, I don't think that exists. So whether it's in business, collaborate. Whether it's in personal life, collaborate. Ask for help. Align with your community connect with them and just think about like the growth and the greatness we can all create together 
I love it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us today, Janine. I'm going to pop your... Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, no, really appreciate this conversation. And also thank you all for the listeners, the viewers here. We have video and audio on Basic Pronounce Radio. Thank you for tuning in. And as always, really grateful for all the comments and the, the reviews and, and just the connections. We love this community. As, as Janine said, it is all about community. I feel like in business, it is so empowering to have this awesome community. So really appreciate you all. Till next time. See ya. To get more from Basic Bananas and to learn new ways to grow your business with clever marketing, visit basicbananas.com.